Father in heaven, it's time for us to open the pages of your word and get clarity. We pray for the Spirit of God to hold every heart and every home, every individual under the sound of your voice, this moment hostage to the authority of your word. Let your word come with clarity. Let it come with conviction. Let it give us something to think about. Set me aside. Teach all of us, including myself. Not I, but Christ. Be honored, loved, and exalted. Not I, but Christ. Be seen, be known, and be heard. Not I, but Christ. In every look and action. Not I, but Christ. In every thought and word. In Jesus' name, amen. Our theme for this week-long project is titled Hope for Families. The subheading is Build, Establish, and Flourish. Hope for the Families. Build, Establish, and Flourish. Are we going to have access to? All right. Just some few announcements before we begin. We're going to let the communication team put forward a certain number that you are going to use. There are people with very sensitive subject matters, sensitive questions, sensitive issues that they want to get them answered. Uh, I personally want to interface with such details. So they will be sharing, putting forth a number that you can used to reach me personally via WhatsApp. You will reach out. Every night, we're going to spend about 15 minutes to answer questions. Any question bothering you on the subject matters we have treated for which you do not have clarity, please feel free to either send it via the same number or through uh, a link that will be made available tomorrow or you can write the question, those of you here in person, but those of you, all right, but those of you who are currently online, you are going to access that on the social media space or the virtual space. Let me say it differently. Every night we have questions and answer session. We'll receive your questions. We'll spend time to answer them. Myself and Doc. Uh, questions pertaining to her sessions, she will be answering them as well. Those pertaining to my session, I will be answering them every night. Saturday, we are going to have a whole afternoon session dedicated for questions and answers. There is no question that is not uh, going to find answers directly from God's word, if you care to know. So I encourage you, regardless how sensitive the questions are, they'll be handled with the highest level of confidentiality and you are secured and safe in this space. Hope for families. Our theme build, establish, and or and flourish. Our subject for module three is unfamiliar family follies. Unfamiliar family follies. The subheading is let's rethink. Let's rethink. Unfamiliar. Unfamiliar family follies. Let's rethink. As I always do, it was Jesus himself who said, if you continue in my words, then you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. If the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. You can say a hearty amen out there. That sounds a cold, snowish amen. You can say a hearty amen out there. Amen. I will take this because this is just day number two. I make to you four promises. Promise number one is the Bible is going to be the bedrock of our study. The reason is the Bible means what it says. And says just what it means. Promise number two, you are going to be enlightened irrespective of who you are. Promise number three, 
You are going to be challenged to make the most important decision of your life. And promise number four, your life and mine will never be the same. Our subject again, I will be saying it every time. It's not as if I have nothing to say. It is my way of re-establishing the authority of the theme for the day. Unfamiliar follies or unfamiliar family follies. Subheading, let's think. Yesterday, we dealt with two subjects. Familiar families, what? Failures. Subheading, it's about us. Then in the afternoon, module two, we dealt with familiar families, fatalities. And the subheading was what? Let's be real. The subheadings are very troublesome. It's about us. Let's be real. And today is, let's rethink. Forgive me. But I want to again state, from tomorrow I'll be summarizing it, for the purposes of those joining us for the first time, there are eight key objectives this series will help us build. It will help build Bible-based families on the principles of wisdom. Not Hollywood-based families. Number two, if you come every day, this series will assist establish your family on the premises or the principle of impeccable understanding. What is the third benefit when you come? You will find the tools necessary for you to have what I call unrelenting and uncommon increase and flourishing. Your family will bloom in an unusual way. Promise number four, this series is going to lead families, move from mere involvement to faithfully commit with and to the Lord. Many families are aliens. In fact, in many homes, the Holy Spirit is an intruder. How do you make your family a place that God finds so exciting, so attractive, and you can commit with your families? your children, your husband, your wife, your household. How can that be? If you come or when you come every night, this fifth promise is yours. Your family will find support to become the center of obedience, choosing the Lord's way, the Lord's path, regardless of the prevailing, attractive, exciting, enticing, and tempting options. Six goal when you come every night. This series will provide you the tools for your families to bond and bind. Many families don't know how to bond. They don't know how to bind. Everyone is on their own. And everybody's asking why. You will bond and you bind. And you do so by asking difficult questions that will aid your family. To have a spiritual audit. Number seven. If you're a young person, you are unmarried, you are certain, you are available, you intend to be married, you will marry and you'll not be stupid. You will make intelligent decisions, informed decisions that will aid or that will support the entire family scheme from a place of wisdom. Lastly, your families will find reignitement, re-excitement, again, to be the center of beauty. What God has destined families to accomplish in the world, your family can be a module. Regardless of your age, it's possible that your family can be a module to many young people, old people across the world. On this note, once again, you are invited to today's session Christian, unfamiliar, family follies. Let's rethink. Allow me to say, when we say folly, 
Folly is a noun. It is a noun that basically means a lack of sound or a lack of good judgment. That is folly. So when you see me, I say, the, the, the caption is unfamiliar family follies. I'm talking about a, a, a concept which is saying you lack good sense of judgment. Another meaning for folly is foolishness. That is basically an outcome of a lack of foresight, vision. Folly also means thoughtless actions resulting in tragic ramifications, consequences, or outcome. To put it bluntly, our theme for this evening is saying, don't be foolish. There are a lot of ways we become foolish, stupid, yet we don't know in the family circles. So folly means absurdity. It means craziness. It means foolishness. It means idiocy. It means lunacy. You are lunatic. It means madness. It means recklessness. Folly means you are silly. You are stupid. Stupidity. Folly. So when the theme, the caption says, unfamiliar family follies, it means uncommon family foolishness. Uncommon family stupidity. Uncommon family madness. Uncommon family craziness. We need to find a way to hide it. So, nice big English. Unfamiliar. Family. Foolish. What of rethink? Rethink basically is saying, consider. So, I'm saying, let's stop the stupidities that are not known. Many stupid things are happening in marriages, in families, in relationships, and they are not classified as foolishness. So the topic is saying, and come on, families, stupidity. Let's rethink about them. So to rethink means, let's reassess something, especially a course of action. Again, especially in order to change it. Rethink means a reassessment, especially one that results in changes being made. Rethink basically also means amend, revalue or evaluate, reassess, re-examine, revise, rework, correct, review. In other words, we are on a path that is foolish path, that is a stupid path, that is a crazy path. Yes, still, many people are unfamiliar in that area. How do we handle it and how can this bring hope to the family? Allow me to say this evening. Now we are going through the theme. Build, establish, and flourish. I'm making a preposition today. If you don't do this, you can't build a family. Those who have married already, who do not build their families on this philosophy, you are on a shaky foundation. The three most important variables that will make a family succeed, it's not love, it's not honesty, it's not faithfulness, it's not intimacy, it's not all these crazy things. Three things that can make a family survive. I will take them today, tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, this is the basis for this entire session. The Bible says, through wisdom, a house is built. Not by love and by understanding, it is established. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Read it again. Through wisdom, a house is built. And by understanding, it is established. By knowledge, 
The rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. This is the philosophical assumption on which the entire week is hinged on. This is the way the families are built. Simple Bible passage, very deep. Yesterday, I made a statement. May I state it again? As goes the family, so the society. It is in the home that life makes up its mind. The craziness in Nairobi, in Kenya, in Ghana, in Africa, across the world, is because we have craziness in the home, stupidity in the homes. And guess what? Nobody wants to talk about it. I'm sorry. I am sent to talk about it. It's first about me. And if you are just like me, then this is also about you. In the words of Chang Swindle, whatever else may be said about the home, it is the bottom line of life, the anvil upon which attitudes and convictions are hammered out. It is the place where life's bills come due, the single most influential force in our earthly existence is no other place than the home. The home or the family today is under the severest attack. So the basic question we want to ask is, how do you build a home? This is another topic, simple to say. How do you build your family? How do you build your marriage? How do you build a relationship? Many people are spiritual. They love the Lord, but their families are ruined. They have the Holy Spirit. They are guided by God, but their marriages are broken. I am here to announce today, regardless of your spirituality, your marriage can fail. Regardless how much you pray, you can be a prayer warrior. You can break, you can pray, fire can come down. Your marriage will break. If you don't know these things we are about to share this week. Marriage is not just based on love. No, no, just not that. The three things I read again, and I pick the first one for today. Through wisdom, a house is built. So what do I mean? When the Bible says through wisdom, a house is built, what does it mean by a house? Allow me to do some basic analysis. A house could refer to constructing literal houses or more likely to the understanding or undertaking of building a home or a family. But for the purposes of this presentation, a house here means a family, a home. This message is also applicable to anybody who wants to build a business, anybody who wants to build a team, anybody who wants to be an entity, an organization, anyone who is interested in building something. This message is applicable, but for the context, we are talking about family. In the Hebrew, a house is translated a home or household or family or descendant. When you read the Bible, house in the Hebrew could mean either of these or any of those, a home, a household, family or descendants. Let me say it differently. Let me put it in context. Take your Bibles. Take note of the following. Go to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 13. The Bible says, Then Isaiah said, Hear now, you house of David. Is it not enough to try the patience of humans? Why will you try? The patience of my God also. Give it a second thought. Then Isaiah said, Hear now, you house of war, David. You families of David. You descendants of David. So I've given you the context. Whenever the Bible says a house, it's talking about a home, descendants, families. Second Samuel chapter 9, verse 1. 
David asked, is there any still, anyone still left of the house of Saul to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Is there anyone still left of the home, of the family, of the descendants? So when the Bible says, through wisdom, a house is built, I'm making the argument that could mean descendants, family, or home. Proverbs 24, through wisdom, a house is built. What do we mean by build? When we say build, I'm referring to, to make, to set up, to erect, to construct. Or it can mean to rebuild or repair. When the Bible says, through wisdom, a house is built. It means, through wisdom, a house is made. Through wisdom, a house is set up. Through wisdom, a home is erected. Through wisdom, a home is constructed. Through wisdom, a home can be rebuilt or repaired. In other words, any home that is already in existence can use the same philosophy and repair it or rebuild it. Unfamiliar family Follies. Let's rethink. What do you need to build a home? According to the text, you need what? No, I didn't hear that. What do you need? Wisdom. Wisdom. What do we mean by wisdom? Follow me very carefully. Follow me very carefully. What do we mean by wisdom? Wisdom is the quality of having experience take note of that experience knowledge and good judgment the quality of being wise wisdom is the capacity to have good judgment in fact when you go to the old testament if i were to have time wisdom is mentioned countless time in summary in the old testament wisdom means technical skills wisdom means experience get to the next slide wisdom means learning wisdom means ability wisdom means cleverness wisdom means prudence wisdom means good results let's go back through wisdom a house is built let's replace it through technical skill no follow me through technical skills where is the guy on the on the staff through experience through ability through learning through cleverness through prudence you can build a home many people are having blood run through their veins in the name of desire to have a family and any rabbit with a bow tie any frog with with a brown suit can have a family the bible says what you need to build a family is you need the technical skills I pity the young man who marry my daughter. You must listen. Don't give your daughters out to any rich man. Any man who has just money. No. Don't marry any slave queen with a beautiful shape and nice body. Any lizard with a red tail can be a wife. To qualify to be a wife, you need the technical skills. Many people are entering marriage without the technical skills, without the needed ability, without the needed cleverness, without the needed prudence and good judgment. Let me give you an example. Go to Exodus chapter 28. You go to verse 3. We are talking about wisdom. 
The Bible says, tell all the skilled workers. Take note. I'm saying wisdom is technical skills. Tell all the skilled workers to whom I have given word wisdom in such matters that they are to make garment for Aaron for his consecration so he may serve me as priests. When I was coming here, my designer fix me up. Everybody cannot make an attire for me. Based on Exodus 28 verse 3, God says, for you to even sow for the priests, you need the technical skills. And that God says, I have given these artisans the wisdom, the technical skills, the prudence, the sound judgment that they can make garment for Aaron so that Aaron can serve me. I'm underscoring the point. Wisdom is technical skills. Exodus 31, verse 3. Write it down. Don't forget for the rest of your life. The Bible says, And I have filled him with the Spirit of God, with wisdom with understanding with knowledge and with all kinds of skills wisdom is the basis for technical skills to build a family you need to have the skills you see to deal with a woman in her early 20s or late 20s or mid 30s you need a technical skills. When a man in his mid 40s, getting to 50s, the crisis men face, a woman doesn't need only a breast shape, but size, weaving hair, dead people's hair. That is not with a lot of concrete on the face, empty head. So only emotion. Why is he treating me like this? You are stupid. You lack the technical skills. You have all the time for the hair, for the body, to put concrete on your pimples. But you do not have the ability to acquire the skills to manage a man who is a choleric. You need technical skills we can pray and cast the demon father in the name of Jesus may this marriage be straight it will fail what they need is war technical skills our subject for this evening unfamiliar family stupidity foolish Let's rethink. What is the secret to building a family? It's another way to look at today's presentation. Building family, secrets to building family. It's basically what we are attempting to address. First Kings chapter 4, verse 29 to verse 30. I'm making a case for wisdom. 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 29 to verse 30. Listen, if you have a boyfriend, you have a girlfriend. Those of you who are not married, you are 10 times better than we, those who are married. They didn't teach us this. So we entered with foolishness. We entered like zombies, blindfolded. A group of young men foolishness in our head and all we were looking for our KPIs in a wife misguided misconstrued now we are worrying the Holy Spirit and God do something new in my life you need a technical skills God gave Solomon 
wisdom. What word will you use to replace wisdom or expression? Technical skills and very great insights and a breadth of understanding as measureless as the sand of the seashore. Solomon's wisdom was greater than the wisdom of all the people of the east and greater than all the wisdom of Egypt. Who gave Solomon the technical skills? It was God. Ability. Wisdom is capacity to handle situations and conditions and make a good decision. That is wisdom. It's a skill that is developed. It's a skill that is learned. It's a skill that is prayed for. I'm going to take you through. We're going to see it. Second Chronicles chapter 1, verse 10 to verse 12. I'm going to run a little more. Give me wisdom and knowledge that I may lead this people. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? God said to Solomon, since this is your heart desire, and you have not asked for wealth, possessions, or honor, nor for the death of your enemies. And since you have not asked for a long life, but for wisdom and for knowledge to govern my people over whom I have made you king, therefore wisdom and knowledge will be given you. And I will also give you wealth, possession, and honor as no king who was before you ever had none after you will have God was saying Solomon what do you need I need the technical skill many young women are looking for guys working with international organization who are stupid money will not keep the home it's a good variable poverty can damage a home I'm going to talk about it this week poverty can make you very useless but the first thing you need when building the home is to find out this young man, this young woman does do is he having the technical skills? Is she having the technical skills, the ability, the capability? Listen to me, some of you who have been married. The problem why the reason why there is a lot of problem in the home. Yesterday we said it is what a sin problem. And one of the sin problem is your husband lacks the capacity. Your wife has lacked the capacity to deal with the situation. He is just not having the wisdom. If you are not wise, you are what? That's why I said the title is Unfamiliar Family Follies. The reason why the two of you are always quarreling is somebody doesn't have the wisdom, the technical skills to deal with an angry man whose ego is bruised. So you don't know how to deal with it as a woman. And all you are doing is you are carrying your body, moving around with your whole degree. You can't even manage a simple house. And the young men and women, we are telling them, Go to school, get a good job. And they are rich, intelligent, foolish graduates with dark suits, white shirt, and white tie. Empty. They lack the technical skill. So these days, young people marry, and after one year, two years, they are tired. All they are asking for, they want what? A divorce. So they divorce this one. You lack the technical skills for this one marriage. Then you go, after four years, you marry this one. You lack the technical skill. Lord, is marriage not for me? No, the problem is not it. You lack the technical skills. No amount of prayer can let me fly an aeroplane. No matter how I pray, I need to acquire the skill to be able to fly a plane. True or false? Now I know how to talk to Kenyans. Ah! We are getting there. My daughter cannot drive. Pam, pam, pa, pam, pam, pa, pam, pam, pa, pam, 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 pam. I will pray. She can't drive. The reason is what? She doesn't have what? The technical skills to drive. This is the problem. Why many homes are not built? Ecclesiastes chapter 2. 
verse 13 and verse 14. I saw that wisdom is better than holy. Just as light is better than darkness. The wise have eyes in their, uh, in their heads, whilst the fools walk in the darkness. So in the marriage, the wise person may be there. And the Bible says, don't be unequally yoked. It's not only about wearing earrings. It's not just about Sabbath. It's not, no, these are part, but it also means don't marry a fully seven-day Adventist. If you are wise, you'll be unequally yoked. Don't marry a stupid, beautiful engineer, seven-day Adventist young lady with a nice body, even a virgin, rich. Don't marry her. She is stupid. Why? I saw that wisdom is better than it's better to marry an ugly wise man than to marry a, a, a foolish wisdom is better than folly just as light is better than darkness the wise they have the technical eyes they have the technical skills they have the insight they have the vision to be able to see and make a sound judgment what the wise can see seated the fools cannot see even in space wisdom is a skill our subject tonight unfamiliar family police our subgetting is what let's rethink according to the old testament in summary wisdom is technical skills for the sake of time i'm jumping go to the book of isaiah chapter 28 i'm coming to make a next strong case all this also comes from the lord almighty Whose plan is wonderful, whose wisdom is magnificent. And that magnificent they are talking about is what we call sound judgment. That is insight. 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 Sound judgment. Isaiah says, the Hebrew word used there as is, is whose insight is magnificent. Wisdom is not just a technical skill, it's insight. It's the capacity to have a certain insight, a certain comprehension, depth on a subject matter. And when you take that route, you will not fail. Wisdom. Malachi chapter 6, verse 9. Listen, the Lord is calling to the city, and to fear your name is wisdom heed the rod and the one who appointed it wisdom in fact there are various shades of wisdom uh, 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 daniel chapter 2 i'm jumping it daniel chapter 2 those follow me follow me carefully daniel chapter 2 verse 14 when ariok the commander of the king's guard had gone out to put to death the wise men of babylon Daniel spoke to him with what? Wisdom and with what? Tact. He spoke to him with a certain skill, a certain ability, a certain capacity. Wisdom. The next question is, what are the benefits of wisdom? I'm going to share with you five or six benefits. If homes must be built with wisdom, what advantage do you have? What benefits will you be privileged with if you have wisdom? I'm now going to the realms of Proverbs chapter 3, and I'm going to spend some few minutes there before I land eventually. The Bible says, number one, for the sake of time, wisdom offers a long life of peace. And I'm going to explain Look at the text, the Proverbs 3 verse 2. For length of days and years of life and peace 
they will add to you wisdom. You see, the ability to make a sound judgment, to say, I am on a trip. My wife is not here. So, I have a sexual need. And I have women or men I can sleep with. But the technical skills to come to a sound judgment, which says, when I sleep with this woman, I am sinning, but I may contract a disease and I will give to my wife and I will alienate my whole family the capacity to take such sound decision, to have such insight, is what we call wisdom. What will it give you? Length of days. What will it give you? Years of life. What will it give you? Peace. If you have wisdom. Many stupid young women died earlier than their years. The reason they lack the capacity to make sound judgment. Wisdom offers a long life and peace. Peace. You look at a situation and ask, hmm, what is the benefit of having this side chick? What is it that I'm going to gain aside the pleasures of the moment and wisdom will say you deserve long years of peace so you know what though you are offered sex on a silver platter you make a sound judgment and you have the skill and you walk away so that for the rest of your life you don't just have length of days you don't just have years of life you also have all oh, peace Wisdom leads to favor before God and before men. Many married men and women do not have favor. You work hard. You work hard. You work hard. And it amounts to nothing. The Bible says, if you have wisdom, and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man wisdom make God excited about you it makes God God is tickled I like his reasoning I like his sound judgment I like her way of thinking and approaching issues the Bible says if you have wisdom you have favor before God. If you have the technical skills that builds a home, you also have favor before human beings. This is the same ability you need to build a company. Listen, you don't get it. You can start a company that is thriving today, but it will fail in the future. Because you will be having no wisdom in your quiver that can guide the decision. God says, anybody with wisdom, the wisdom that builds a home, the technical skills that builds families and relationships, is no wonder some organizations ask some people before they give them some positions if you are married. Marriage, if you build a house well, you have some technical skills. You have some stability. You have some capacity to make some calls and some decisions. Wisdom, it speaks or supplies health. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 8. Wisdom supplies health.
it is wisdom that is going to tell a woman who is with a cheating husband how to go about her life and not to get high blood pressure. It's wisdom. It's wisdom what to give a woman who have when your husband is embarrassing you from place to place. It is wisdom that will make you know the face in which you are, the reality confronting your life, and the calls you need to make, the sound decision you need to arrive at so that you can have health. If you have wisdom, you are in even a toxic relationship. Wisdom is going to tell you, is giving you the technical skills how to handle it so that you can have healing to your flesh, refreshment to your bones. Wisdom is the secret to discipline. I don't have time. Wisdom birth good choices. Then you will walk on your way securely and your foot will not be stumbled. You will be so confident. You are sure how you are going. If you have wisdom, it birth good choices. Wisdom gives you honor. It will never disgrace you. It will never embarrass you. The wise will inherit what? Honor. But fools, they get what? Disgrace. Yesterday we said, sin brings what? Some four or five days. The first one I said is sin birth what? It deceives. Sin does what? It disappoints. Sin does what? Dominates. It disgraces. And finally, it will do all. It will destroy. The Bible says, if you are a wise person, your end will be honor. If you are stupid, you will see disgrace at all costs. Wisdom. Slide 104. It is wisdom that leads the human being to get to a place to say no or no more. Sin takes you where you don't want to go. It keeps you longer than you want to stay. It costs you more than you want to pay. Listen, I, I am tempted. Go to 107. I want to get some fact on wisdom. Okay. What else do we want to say about wisdom? Go to Proverbs chapter 4. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all your getting, get understanding. The wise woman builds her house. But with her own hands, the foolish woman tears her down. Pause. Question. How can a wise woman build her house? What will a foolish woman do? The choices. Listen. When a man is angry, very angry, when the demons of Ghana have now landed on Tiki Mensa and all the flies in the house, they are flying. And then they are getting fried just by fry. Brr, you, there is no way. Then a wise woman like Samuela, she will not talk. When you finish making all the noise, Morning devotion, she will elect to lead. Then she will say, Pastor, pray for us. That's mischief. So she'll start to guilt strip you. Mischief. So she'll say, Pastor, can you pray for us? She'll call you God's will of honey or da, da, da. But then she'll start to Pastor, man of God, please pray for us. So that the guilt will sink down and down and down. But the foolish woman. Bang! Assault. Police station. Front page. Man of God assaulted the wife. Bang, bam. SDA pastor finally a teacher of marriage now in family life abuse before the tribunal. The wise woman builds a house. I'm going to teach something on suitability. 
Wisdom will tell you what is applicable with my friend's marriage is not applicable to my marriage. Wisdom. Hmm. The way he treats the wife based on his temperament. If you look at my husband's temperament, he cannot treat me that way. It's wisdom. It's wisdom that will tell you Listen, a man's philosophy of life is let's eat well. And another one's philosophy of life is let's build wealth. And the one eating well and the one wanting to build wealth, now the wife is saying, see the car he has bought for the wife. I am with you for 25 years. Look at us. It takes wisdom. Now by wisdom, the Lord laid the foundations of the earth. By understanding, he set the heavens in place. Can I get the slide? By wisdom, the Lord laid the earth's foundation. By understanding, he set the heavens in place. Question, how did God build the earth? Based on what? I'm not hearing it. Based on what? How did he advise we should build our homes? It should be based on what? What is the intercession of what God used to build the world and what we need to build our homes? The, the, the intercession is what? Wisdom. Question. When you were getting married, those married, what did you build it on? Bottles. Breast size. Smiles. Her social standing. Six packs. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. He's a chartered accountant. Ah. Oh. The first thing God used to determine how the world must operate, he says, by wisdom, the Lord laid the earth's foundation. What God did, listen, day number one, an example, let me do an example. My time is coming as I wrap it up. You see, what God, follow me, guys, follow me. If not, my ticket will come. Follow me, follow me. When God was creating the earth, day one, he created the light and darkness. Follow me carefully. Based on what God had in mind for the last day, day one's creation was needed for day two creation to survive. So watch, day two, God created the atmosphere and the firmament. Now watch. Day three, God created now dry land, all plant life, both large and small. You see, plants will need the atmospheric air and the firmament. They will need the light for photosynthesis for the third day's creation, which is all plants, both large and small, on the dry land. So day one, is supported, is supporting, as you say, day two's creation. Day one and two's creation is supporting day three's creation. Follow carefully. Now, if you watch day four, God created all the stars, all the heavenly bodies. All these are needed for day five to survive, for the birds, for all life that lives in the waters. They need from day one, day two, day three, day four, for them to survive. If you go to day six, God created all creatures 
that live on the dry land, including now human beings. So for man to survive, for us to have oxygen in the atmosphere, God created, started creating just light and darkness. Guess what? From day one, I go back again, day one, light and darkness. Day two, he created the skies, the atmosphere and the firmament. Day number three, he created all the plant life, both large and small. Day number four, he created all the stars, the galaxies, so that there will be light. Then the Bible says he created two great light, one to rule the day and one to rule the night. Then day five, he created all other animals, birds in the waters and uh, animals in the waters and the birds day number six god created human being the the, the the insight is you need a certain technical skills to know what a human being will need to survive for you to begin day one day two day three day four day five listen even day six who did he create first out of the human beings he created a man and a woman will need a man to survive in god's wisdom so a man was a raw product a woman became a byproduct so the bible says he took man out of a woman listen you need a certain threshold of wisdom to put things in order this way in other words for you to build a home you see From the day the marriage is consummated, you need a lot of intelligent, technical skills, ability, capabilities to make decisions. Decisions like day one, day two, day three, day four, day five. I'm sorry to say some people are in day two and they are married. No, God didn't bring marriage in day two. He brought it with day Day six so you need a certain technical skills then god said uh, all that i created it was very good ladies and gentlemen he had the technical skills so you i want to get married i've started making mistake in day one at day two i'm not putting in the right thing day three i'm not putting in the right thing day four i'm not putting in the right thing day five i'm not putting in the right thing Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says what God used to create the earth is the same thing God is asking. If you want to build a home, you need a technical skills. You don't need just prayer. We have prayed too much, yet we are so stupid. We have cried to the Lord so much, yet we are still stupid. How then do you get wisdom as I, as I roll it? I, I'm, I'm jumping now. I'm jumping now. Where can wisdom be found? Where can wisdom be found? The Bible says in the book of Job, I'm wrapping this up. Job, it says, but where can wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Man does not know its value, nor is it found in the land of the living. The deep say, it is not in me. And the sea says, it is not with me. It cannot be purchased for gold, nor can silver be weighed for its price. Neither gold nor crystal can equal it, nor can it be exchanged for jewelry or fine gold. No mention shall be made of coral or quads for the price of wisdom if about rubbish. The topax of Ethiopia cannot equal it, nor can it be valued in pure gold. Then from whence can wisdom come from? And where is the place of understanding? Verse 21 says, it is hidden from the eyes of all the living and concealed from the birds of the air. We have heard a report about it only with our eyes. You ask death. Death, where is wisdom? He says, I've just heard something called wisdom. You ask destruction. Where is wisdom? It says, we heard about it before. So, where can wisdom be found? 
Then the Bible says, Job 28 verse 23, God understands its ways and he knows its place. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot be married and be successful better than the Christian who follows the Bible. Never. No Buddhist can enjoy marriage more than the Christian. No Jew, nobody from the Jewish tradition, Judaism, has no deep framework and offer for marriage. The Bible says what you need to listen. Hollywood, Nollywood, Gollywood, Collywood, what all the wood, Uga wood, Ziga wood, whatever wood or wilderness or tree. There is no framework that supports marriage better than the Bible. If we have agreed. We need a certain technical skills to build up marriage. Job says, I went searching and I was asking, look at the next verse, to establish a weight for the wind and apportion the waters by measure. When he made a law for the rain and a path for the thunderbolt, Job says, look, how come God has commanded the water? Stay here. You have limitation. You are dry land. You are the wet land. It is based on wisdom. He has given limitation. People don't even know how to create limits in their marriages. They need wisdom. And where can you get the wisdom from? Verse 27. He, then he saw wisdom and declared it. He prepared it. Indeed, he searched it out. And to man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord. That is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding the capacity to know God's will what God says and follow it is wisdom you don't get it you don't get it let me say it differently my goodness when a man says I will not commit adultery is wisdom it's not just a normal decision it has ripple effect there are many children born out of wedlock. In God's mind, for children to be born, a husband and a wife, not just a man and a woman, a husband and a wife must be in place. Children need a certain level of commitment to be raised. But today, we need sperm donors who donate sperm to single girls. And they have children. And we are wondering why is a society like this? Why wouldn't it be? Some people are giving birth. They have no business giving birth. The foolishness in Nairobi, the foolishness in Kenya, the foolishness in Ghana, the foolishness in the church, the reason why today 10 people are married, 5 are divorced, is there is no wisdom. Look at it this way. But where can wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding but where can wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? The Bible says, wisdom, Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 12, is a shelter. As money is a shelter. But the advantage of knowledge is that wisdom preserves those who have it. Wisdom gives you an advantage that those with power, access, influence, they don't have. The same way, those who think they are rich, they have a shield. The Bible says, wisdom provides a certain security that nothing can give you in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the quarrel in the homes, the frustration, even this chicken relationship, 18-year-old girl, 19-year-old girl, they come and say, it's too much for me, I can't take it, what is the problem? He's just, he's not picking my call. Foolishness, the two of them, they lack wisdom. James chapter 1 verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, who gives wisdom? MBA will not give you wisdom. PhD will not give you wisdom. MSc will not give you wisdom. The wisdom you need to build a home. 
When they say ask God, it's not only prayer. He's searching through God's word. What does the Bible say? Look, listen, I want to end on this note. I want to exalt this book as the book of wisdom. Look, the Bible deals with matters of universal interest. It deals with history. It deals with philosophy. It deals with science. It deals with health. It deals with architecture. It deals with religion. It deals with pr prophecy. It deals with family. It deals with relationship. It speaks to the needs of every generation. It offers solution to life perplexity and even reveals the origin and the future of our world. The Bible has brought peace to the troubled conscience. It has brought comfort to the sorrowful. It has brought hope to the despairing and courage to the desperate and, and the assurance of a reunion even to those who are bereaved. Look, when I look at the Bible, the reason why it is the source of wisdom, God uses princes to write this book called the Bible. Poets wrote the Bible. Philosophers wrote the Bible. Fishermen wrote the Bible. Statesmen wrote the Bible. Prophets wrote the Bible. Listen, just take time. You look at it, priests wrote the Bible. Publicans wrote the Bible. Physicians wrote the Bible. Men learned in the wisdom of Egypt, they wrote the Bible. Men educated in the school of Babylon, they wrote the Bible. The Harvard scholars of our day, they wrote the Bible in those days. Men trained at the feet of great rabbis like Gamaliel, they wrote the Bible. Men of every grade and class are represented in this mis mysterious volume. The Bible says, it, it says in First Peter, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. How do you grow as a husband? How do you grow as a boyfriend? Ladies and gentlemen, I recommend to you today the B I B L E. If you want to grow, the Bible says, I can make you wiser. Than even your teachers how can a young man cleanse his ways or keep his way pure by living according to your word the bible will shield you from danger it will shield you from shame it will shield you from embarrassment it will shield you from disease it will shield you look we have neglected this and we are followed the theories of men. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Thy word is truth. Many people are seeking for truth concerning marriage. God is the initiator. He created marriage. He says you need wisdom, the technical skills. This is why this week, We'll be teaching practical ways. Listen, one day I'm dedicating it, what it is to be a man. Too many boys and males are parading as men. Having a penis and a six-pack doesn't make you a man. You are a male. Having breasts, forgive me, it doesn't make you a woman. The Bible says, all your words are true. All your righteousness, righteous law, they are eternal. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The entrance of thy word giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his leaves. I have esteemed his word above more than my necessary food we are talking about wisdom from God's word I the Lord I speak the truth I declare what is right through wisdom a house is built it's not a suggestion it's the truth any marriage that is struggling is a wisdom deficiency any family that is broken I dare you bring every divorce case one was stupid one was foolish the reason why you and your wife you and your children you and your husband you and your family we cannot live in peace there's a problem it's a wisdom problem foolishness in the church foolishness on the streets if any of you lack wisdom let him ask God so my prayer today Dear Lord, may I not build a business 
and leave my home? May I not build a career and leave my home? May the two of us not follow money. We are absentee parents. Children are born. Two couples or couple, all of them are chasing money. And they left the children, left them to television, left them for nannies, left them. We just want to be called parents. The Bible says children are gifts from God. It takes wisdom to know what to do even with your children. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to ask today, unfamiliar family follies. The world will not talk about it. What the world talks about, your standing in your career, your success in the corporate world. Nobody talks about how, how to build a community based on honesty, based on integrity, based on contentment, based on hard work, based on genuineness, based on trustworthiness. The reason is that there is a lack of wisdom in the land. I repeat as I close tonight, through wisdom, a house is built. This evening, I want to sing a basic song. Anybody here wants to tell the Lord? The book of wisdom. I want to invite you tomorrow morning. Every morning, 8 a.m. Kenya time. A group of people, we meet to study the Bible. We believe this is a source of wisdom. We pray and tell the Lord, guide me. Guide me to today. I don't know what it is to be a husband. I don't know what it is to be a man. I ask for direction. I ask for the technical skills. As I study your word, as I look around my community, grant me the ability, grant me the skill to be a husband, a wife, a son, a daughter, a boyfriend, a girlfriend. Indeed. I just want to ask. I lack wisdom. Is there somebody here who is like me? You lack wisdom. And you want to say, dear Lord, I lack it. Let me see your hand. I don't have it. Please, stand on your feet. We are singing that song. They can take over the screen now. I'm done. Those of you joining online, you lack wisdom. You want to say, dear God, this world is difficult. I need guidance. I need the technical skills. As they sing this song, join them. The great Jehovah pilgrim through these barren lands. I am weak. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me. I don't have it. I don't have it. When I tread the verge of Jordan, be my anxious fear subside. I need wisdom. Those of you joining online, I need wisdom. The foolishness is too much. I need wisdom. 
everybody, if you do not have wisdom, you know you need it. Just come, take away your pride. Put down your pride and come. Lord, I need wisdom. I need wisdom. I need wisdom. heads bow, all eyes close. I want you to spend the first one to two minutes tell God exactly what you need. The areas you need the wisdom. Please speak out to God. God, I need wisdom to be patient. I need wisdom to trust again. I need wisdom how to deal with my cheating husband who has repented. I need wisdom how to deal with my wife who is cantangorous. I need wisdom for my children. Talk to God. What exactly do you need a wisdom for? speak out to God. I need wisdom. I need wisdom to deal with betrayal. I need wisdom to deal with emotional abuse. I need wisdom to deal with a disrespectful wife or boyfriend. Father in heaven, this night, in simple terms, we are foolish. We did not create marriage. You did. You have a blueprint. You have said expressly in your word the way you build the earth. We need the same framework to succeed as families. But we started our homes based on sexual attraction. Many families started based on weird assumptions and philosophical frameworks. Our nations are battling. Our countries are suffering. Our societies are completely morally corrupt and distraught. There seems to be no, no peace in the land. The women are hurting. The men are tired. The children are disillusioned. And we pretend every day that all is well. Master, this week, this new week, the first message for today is the chaos in the home is a lack of wisdom. It's a deficiency of wisdom. So today, we declare we are foolish. We are stupid. Lord, we are mad. Hence, we have come. Based on your promise, if anyone desires wisdom, they should ask God. So today, we set aside our egos. We set aside our pride. We set aside our self-conceitedness. We set aside our arrogance. We set aside our self-excitement and glorifying our weak need methods. And we jettison them and say, we embrace the Bible's philosophy. Give wisdom to our wives. Give wisdom to our mothers. Give wisdom to our sisters. 
every condition and every situation, we pray for these technical skills. As we study your word, may wisdom be impacted. Open our eyes, dear Lord, to see wondrous things out of your law. We pray for the husbands. We need wisdom. The foolishness in the heart of we the men is untold. Our wives are tired. Our wives are tired. Our women are tired. They are confused. Today we say we need short hair. Tomorrow we need long nails. Today we say we need slim body. Tomorrow we say we need big bodies. We are completely confused and our women are completely disillusioned. Today, in this place, during this week, in this season, bless with wisdom. We pray for the young men. They are confused, dear Lord. They are foolish pro. The foolishness is at the pro status. In our wisdom, we claim human wisdom. We think it is degrees. We think it is our whole certificate. The Bible says the fear of the Lord. The day we begin to make God supreme. The day we begin to make God first. The day we begin to make God the best. The day we begin to make God the last. It's not wisdom. It's just the beginning of wisdom. Alas, dear God. We pray for a relationship with Jesus in a way that at least, if for nothing, we begin the wisdom journey. Bless those who are participating. So this evening, I pray that you will touch every life. Dear Lord, I pray that you will touch every home. I pray that you will touch every individual, every family, every husband, every wife, every marriage, every relationship. We pray in the name of Jesus, especially for our young girls and our young men. Lord, any relationship that is based on foolishness, that is based on just pelvic issues, we pray, may the priorities change today. May wisdom become the principal thing. May we pursue it. May we pursue it fervently. May we pursue it diligently. May we pursue it without any reservation. Bless our guests. Bless our visitors. Bless our members. Bless every individual. Bless those watching across the internet. Bless. Dear Lord, bless. Bless. Let the relationships begin to change. Let there be a turn around. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you will find. Knock, the door will be open. Today, we ask for wisdom. Today, we seek for wisdom. Today, we knock for wisdom. May it be apportioned to every individual according to their need. So we say, until we meet again tomorrow, the same time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the God of wisdom lift his face upon every one of us and be kind to us. May marriages begin to be amended, healed, and repaired according to your divine similitude. For we have asked, not in any means name, but in the name of him who died, rose again on the third day. That name is Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let somebody say an amen and amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you.